Hi, everybody. Jean Humbrecht with Humbrecht Law, criminal and traffic defense attorney in Manassas, Virginia. Welcome to my weekly local business spotlight Facebook Live. Um, you might remember my guest from before, Troy Reamer, who was on talking about um, the, my book cover that he designed for me. Um, which I'm not going to plug right now. Um, but uh, Troy actually today is going to be talking to us um, about website design. This is um, this is one of the last business spotlights in our series on how to start a successful business. And um, I would venture a guess that every business needs a website, but maybe that's a question that Troy can answer. Um, <laughs> So um, Troy's going to be talking to us about not just the, um, the importance of having a website period, but strategically designing the website to reach your target audience and convey your brand messaging, because there's a lot of things that a website can show that you may or may not be aware of. Uh, passionate about helping people and businesses achieve their dreams of success, Troy has worked with hundreds of businesses to deliver value to their customers. With a background in finance and marketing, Troy dedicated the last few years to developing the website division of a marketing company in the Washington, D.C. area. Um, his successes led him to focus in on these skills with Red Clay Creative, which is the company he owns. Troy believes that hard work, communication, and integrity are in integral to any relationship and strives to help businesses with those core values at his foundation. And I will say that Troy is a very hard worker and a very patient person to put up with me as a client. So. With that, um, I'm going to turn it over to Troy. If you want to just tell everybody um, a little bit more about yourself, and then we'll just um, have a conversation. Yeah, uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, oh, there I go again with the ums. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, a lot of our work focuses, like you said, around the website. Every business right now needs a website. You're not able to really do that much in person, and the website is one of the first places people come to see who you are, what you represent. And I've been very excited to work with Gene on this new website that we are launching. And uh, I'm sure we can share the screen at some point to show it off. Oh, yeah. You want me to do that now? Sure. We could, yeah. Um, Troy, um, I, I've had a website since I started my business six years ago, but Troy has been um, helping with the redesign of it. Um, and I am very excited. Um, let's see. Let's share screen. I am very excited to show everybody what the new landing page of my website looks like. All right. Can you guys see this? I Great. can see it. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to scroll down so everybody can see there's it. There's the book. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's the book that I mentioned that Troy designed that cover, which I love the cover. It's a very popular cover. Everybody loves it. Or at least they tell me they do. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you click here. And uh, so, you know, reckless driving, you click on that and there's a description of reckless driving and up here, uh, you know, you can click to get the book and then that takes you to Amazon where you can buy my book and scrolling oh and i didn't share the screen of amazon oh well scrolling down okay. client testimonials here oh which are flashing across which i love this thing if you guys look for just a second you'll see it come on flash 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 like watching water yeah, it's like every i think it's every 10 seconds there we go um and then uh my recent blogs frequently asked questions Oh, I love the way that looks. I'm actually just seeing the final one for the first time, guys. So you're checking it out live with me. And there are the organizations that I'm in and awards that I've won. And there's my map of where my business is located, right near the courthouse. And then latest tweets down here. Awesome. All right. Well, you guys can check out the landing page. I'm not going to ooh and ah over it anymore. But um, that is uh, that is my new landing page that Troy um, Troy designed. Um, so I guess we're in the course of this conversation about the importance of designing a website. I guess Troy and I are going to talk about how how we came up with um, the way we wanted mine to look there. Yeah, Jeans. Well, you started out with a very specific vision of what you wanted. You know, you had mapped out these different sections. You're like, I like this section. I like that section. So I really looked at it as my job to create that into one cohesive vision, which we're seeing now. 
Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, we looked at a lot of different law firm websites and I've worked with several lawyers and my goal is always to not just do the same tired law firm website. And, you know, but it's like, it's hard because I think every lawyer looks at everyone else's website and they're like, I want that part, I want that part. Mm -hmm. So, so it was a fun challenge. Um, it always is. And I'm excited with the final design. You know, there's always parts that I, I want to like tweak or adjust, mm -hmm. over time, but I think it looks really good. Yeah, I really like it too. I'm, I'm bringing this back up again. Um, what Troy is talking about, about specific things that, that I wanted, like, I had a vision in my head of how I wanted the frequently asked questions to look, or I had a vision in my head about what I wanted to be on the main page. And um, so this, this was one of them. I wanted frequently asked questions. I thought that was important. And then that's that's kind of the way that I was envisioning it looking, um, you know, based on what I saw in some templates and some other attorneys' websites and not even just law firm websites, but um, I got my ideas just by looking at a bunch of different things. New, I like that and I like that. Um, mm -hmm. And then here the client testimonials, like I wanted them to flash across, like we, like I showed you earlier. Um, so that kind of a thing. Like I had some, I had some specific ideas um, in in mind. But e even though I, I had in my head those specific ideas, it's not um, that ended up kind of changing over time um, because in mm -hmm. one issue I saw, or I was a little concerned about. There were a lot of things I wanted on the the main page. But the, the landing page is the main page of the website, if anybody doesn't know, um, the, the home the home page, I guess. Um, so I, I didn't want it. I didn't want there to be so much that you have to keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And then eventually you get bored and you stop looking at it. Um, and then also, if you're on mobile, I felt like if it was too much, it wouldn't load or it would just take too long. So there were some things that I ended up, you know, cutting out and decided not to, you know, put in certain places. And that was based on suggestions that um, Troy actually recommended. Yeah, I think we like had a nice balance because at first, like you said, there's like a lot of flash to it and it still has flash, but it's not okay. like over the top. Yeah, because I don't, I don't, you, I'm sure you guys have been on websites where um, it takes forever to load. Like there's so much, you know, animation or video or um, God, what, what's the, what's the proper term for that? Um, no animation video uh yeah that's good yeah just just so much going on on the page it takes forever to load and you know any business if if your website's taking too long to load someone will just you know click the back button and go to another website if they're just randomly looking for a business you know so you don't you don't yeah. want that problem <laughs> no that's a good point you know it's i think the exact stat is if a website takes longer than two seconds to load you lose 50% of your traffic. Yeah. Oh, Terry, Terry Griffin asked a question. She, she must've missed the very beginning. Um, did he design your website? Um, yes, he did design my website, not my website from six years ago, my new website, which I will add back to this, uh, stream, Terry, if you're still watching, there it is. Um, I love, I love these, uh, this technology. All I had to do is click a button and then I go back to this. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and I mean you can see I, I actually have several uh, several windows up which I shouldn't, but you know it's not it's not taking too long to load, and the um, the client testimonials are flashing across you know the way that they're supposed to. So yeah, so I'm 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 happy with the way that it turned out. Oh, another thing to talk about. Um, well, I don't know why I, I'm not the expert. I shouldn't be <laughs> the conversation. No, no, no. I mean, colors, like I actually was going back and forth about what shade of blue I wanted. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm sure you guys have all probably heard, you know, certain colors convey certain things and certain fonts and all that stuff. So Troy, do you want to talk about that at all? Yeah, it, uh, you know, blue is one of those colors that a lot of um, like financial practices and lawyers use on their websites because it builds trust. Um, and it's just like you said these colors cre create different feelings red is often used with uh, food brands because it makes you hungry and excited <laughs> um so yeah it's just these are all like little nuanced choices that you take when making the design and same with the fonts it's like you don't want something to be 
to I'm trying to think of like what the word is. It's like you want it to be professional. You don't want it to look like Comic Sans. It's like your okay. company or your business. You're a lawyer. You know, you're a law firm, and it's like you don't want to convey the wrong message. And oftentimes, it's like one of the things like Steve Jobs. He was so um, focused on the fonts with you know the first computers, and it's because those fonts create a feeling too. It's not just the color, it's it's everything a part of the design. So those two things are the first places where I start with any design. Mm -hmm. um, but then then there's also the issue of here, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it back up again. Um, well, issue, that's not the right word. Um, but not not just the blue, but where you have the blue. Like I don't I don't know mm -hmm. if you can see my arrow, but I'm like so you see this top part of the website, like where the social media is, like, you know, are you going to have that white? Because if it's a different color, you're not going to see the Facebook and the LinkedIn and the Twitter. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that, that kind of stuff too, which, you know, I didn't really, I didn't really think about until I was going back and forth with Troy. And what about this? And what about that? And then I didn't think about that. Like if you have blue up here at the top, you know, above the logo, like behind the social media, uh, some of that stuff is going to disappear. And then, you know, how is that phone number going to look if it's on top of the blue, you know, and, and is white the best color to have on top of blue for the writing, you know, things that I, I didn't think about. And I thought that I considered a lot of details, you know? Yeah. Well, it's like, let's look at the header. For instance, you have the contact button that's highlighted in a lighter blue, the phone number highlighted in a lighter blue. And those are design choices meant to draw the person's eye there. You know, mm -hmm. whether they're looking for that and can't find it or, you know, whether you just want to draw the attention there. Mm -hmm. That's, those are important choices. Yeah. Yeah. And something that, uh, like I said, I didn't, I didn't think about. Um, and then also the color of your logo. Oh, that's another thing. Um, so, so th this is my current logo. Um, I would like to change it. Um, maybe Troy, we can talk about that later, but, um, I, I guess what I'm trying to get at is, um, you know, maybe a company has a logo and if you already have one that you're happy with, um, should you match the colors of your logo with your website or should you, I mean, should they, should they match or should you possibly change the way your logo looks based on the website design you want? Like they, should they, should they match each other or go together? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. You want it like all these things, the logo, your business card, the website, what you put on, on social media, those are all aspects of the brand. And with the logo, you don't necessarily need it to have like to be exactly like the website, but it's good for it to have relation to it. Like you don't have to use the same font in the logo that you use on your website. It can be slightly different or something like that. But, um, the colors should match. It's like they, if you have brand colors, it's like yeah, you want those things to become recognizable. You know, mm -hmm. when you think of McDonald's, I'm thinking about food now that we talked about those food <laughs> colors. But it's like you think of McDonald's, it's you have the red and the yellow, and they use those red and yellow throughout their brand, and it starts to become iconic. T Mobile has the pink. Um, yeah. You know, it's like those are, and they tried to actually uh, trademark the, the color that they use. Uh, so th there's all kinds of interesting stories about brands and how they create these connections between their marketing efforts, their website, their logo, social media, et cetera. Um, so would you say that, let, let's think, let's talk about businesses that are just starting, you know, maybe you don't have the logo or maybe you don't, um, you don't have a, a color scheme in mind, but you got to have a website, like you said. Um, should you, should you just get something out there so you have some sort of online presence or should you really be thinking about all of this, you know, in the beginning from day one of your business, which is not really something that I did. I just, I just put a website out there that I wasn't, um, I wasn't super happy with, um, not that there was anything wrong with it. It's just not what I, not what I envisioned. I, you know, I wanted not the colors and all that stuff. But um, I had to have a website. So, would you suggest that people take the time, businesses take the time to think about all these things when they first, um, you know, 
get a website out there or should they just get something out there and then work on redesigning it later? I would say it depends on your brand or what your business does. So if you're communicating with people a lot, it matters less. But if you have a product, it matters a lot more um, at the beginning. Because oh. it's like with a product, people will find your product before you and you may never even interact with someone at the business versus, you know, a lawyer, you're going to be talking with them. It's about that relationship that you build with them. And over time, you know, you want the business to start to do some of that marketing for you, you know, the website, all these pieces. But at the very beginning, you're going to be the main sales tool. So it's not as necessary, um, despite how much I would love to say everyone needs it. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's just a lot of time and money. And yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And there are a lot of things when you start a business. Um, yeah, the website was one of the first things I had up, but I was um, I was obsessed with having the website live, like the day that I incorporated, which was not necessary. Um, but, <laughs> Cause I mean, how many people were looking for me? But to me, in my head, I was you like, start somewhere. Yeah, all these things I got to do at the same time, and yeah, but um, but yeah. So I I knew that I needed a website, and that was in 2014, and. Um, and even even now, I, I think with um, you know with COVID and, and everybody being home um, a lot more than they used to be, I think you alluded to that earlier. Um, there's people are doing a lot more online, so having that online presence is, I, I would say, important pre-COVID, but probably even more important now for a business, right? Hundred percent, yeah. It because uh, people can't really walk in to your place of business i mean some places they can but it's like online is where everything is where everyone's spending their time uh, whether we like it or not <laughs> yeah yeah well because of that that's why i started doing these lives so <laughs> yeah yeah that's a pretty um, cool tool it's useful for people starting out yeah yeah it is i forgot to mention earlier if anybody has any questions for troy or about um websites feel free to type them in the chat um and David Hillison said, perfect image for your site. And I had another person text me and say they really like it. So Troy, you did a good job. People like it. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but there, uh, as I said, I was probably not like probably a slightly irritating client because, like, you know, I, and, and this is actually probably leads me to a good question. I don't know how much this stuff matters, right? Like, like, oh, I don't really like the font. Like, just because I don't like the font, that doesn't mean that that's, you know, the font that I, I shouldn't have. Like, I, I think about all these things. And like I said, the different shade of blue and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know where I was really going with my question. No, I, I think I, I mean, those things matter. Uh, if they matter to you, they matter. You know, a lot of times with the brand or anything you put out as a part of your brand, it's something that you want to be proud of. And if you're proud of it, that people will see that confidence and that excitement and that just um it's just a, a part of the whole business and it's exciting yeah and, and you also mentioned something about uh you know you worked with other law firms and you don't you don't you me as a law firm i don't want my website to necessarily look like every other law firm's website i think you mentioned that because um i guess to other people it just it all looks the same right because i've i've seen I've looked at a lot of different lawyers' websites and it just gets boring sometimes. Yeah, you want to find ways to differentiate yourself. And especially in this area, there's so many lawyers with different niche focuses. And it's like the more that you can differentiate yourself, not just with your service offering, but the way you look and the colors that you use. You know, we published a site this week that is the main colors are white, black, and red, you know, versus like white, blue, gold, you often see. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's just different ways to set yourself apart. Yeah. And it was, it was also important for me here, I'll share the screen again. It was also important for me to have the uh, social media icons um, at the top and, you know, you click on it. I don't know if you guys can see, but I clicked on it and it went to my Humbrecht Law Facebook page. 
um, and you know Twitter and all that other stuff. And if you're if you're on mobile and you click on the phone, that'll obviously we all know that'll it'll call the phone number, which is another important thing. Um, so I mean, all these little details are important because if you don't have that that clickable link uh, for your phone number and people are looking you up on mobile and they click on it and they can't call you, they're just going to go to the next website. They're not going to, yep. you know, they're not going to take that. You got to make it easy for them. They're not going to take the time to like, you know, type it. In. <laughs> they just want to click on it, you know? Yeah. In design, we call that reducing friction. Yes. You want to reduce the friction as much as possible make it as easy as possible for people to reach out to you. Mm -hmm. Cause that's the goal. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say for you, especially, you know, you're very active on social media. So having those social media icons, you know, right at the top is huge. Yeah. I didn't even really think about that, but yeah. And then these, yeah, these are, these are all the things that I think about behind the scenes. <laughs> and these frequently asked questions, um, obviously there's going to be a page with more FAQs. Um, but, these are these these were the you know the five most frequently asked questions and when i was getting up to troy i'm like i don't out of all these i don't know which ones are the most frequently asked like what if i don't put this one but somebody really wants to know and is this one more important than that one yeah that's all the crap that i was thinking about i'm like <laughs> which ones are the most? <laughs> um like it's not an earth shattering thing there um but yeah and 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 another thing these badges that are scrolling across um, I didn't want it to look choppy. You know how sometimes like the badges come across and it's like one set and then it's static there for a second and then another set. Oh and, yeah. Yeah. So that, that's just something that I personally didn't, didn't like. And I really wanted them to flash across just because I thought it was cool. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I didn't want the flashing badges to be, um, underneath, you know, the, the flashing client testimonials or next to it. Cause that would, you know, that would look weird. It's like um, distracting. Yeah. Yeah. So when I, when I first went to Troy with my ideas, I'm, I mean, generally everything that we have here is, is what I wanted, but there, there were just some details because obviously I'm not a website designer um, that we ended up changing. And that's why you need a good website designer um, to tell you these things. And I could have just said, nope, we're doing it my way or the highway, but that would not have been good. <laughs> no, I mean, that's something I really appreciated. It's like, you had a very specific vision. You were very detailed, but you were also open to suggestions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's kind of disheartening as a designer sometimes when people are just like, no, it's this way. That's the only way. And then, um, yeah, I mean, I have clients like that. They're not as fun to work with. So I appreciate your openness during the design process. Well, thanks. I, I appreciate your uh, your quick responses and explaining everything. <laughs> um, and... Same thing with the book cover, but with the book cover, obviously it's just, there's really just one, it's the front and the back, the website, there's, yeah. <laughs> there's so many things. There's a lot of moving parts. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. Literally. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so, but um, yeah, Troy was great. I recommend him to anybody and you know, you guys see the, the landing page. I mean, it's, it's awesome. And it's what I wanted. He was a great person, is a great person to work with um very responsive explains things um yeah so i'm i'm very happy with the way that this turned out um so thanks troy for everything with the landing page yeah happy to help you know and i'm excited to see the website grow and see your business grow and it's uh it's awesome that's why i yeah. love doing what i do working with the people that i do because you see change and you know they affect change in other people's lives and it's great yeah. Uh, is there is there anything else about website design that um, for? Well, this is more geared towards um, you know starting a successful. Yeah, there's probably a lot. I'm like, there's so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, anything else that you know we didn't? Maybe that's not necessarily on my website. You know, anything else that you want to tell people about? Um, that's a good question. I I would say. Oftentimes, you know, it's funny from a web designer saying this, but it's like oftentimes the thing that holds people back from getting their website up is perfecting every little last detail. Mm -hmm. And it's like knowing that the website's a living, breathing thing, it's going to change over time. It's going to adapt. Uh, there's going to be updates to it. And knowing that it's not what you published today isn't the final thing. 
Mm -hmm. And you don't want it to be because you want when people come back, you know, six months, a month from now, you want them to see a new image at the top or a new slider. Mm -hmm. So it's fresh, exciting. Um, So, yeah, I just think think of it as a living document versus, you know, think something you publish once and then update every three years. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point. I've been to some websites where the picture is just so old. I'm like, that picture's 20 years old. <laughs> yeah. Up to date one. Um, but then technology too. Like I've on, on my website that there's um there's a link to my Twitter, so the latest tweets are coming up, but you know, maybe I'll later decide that I don't want to do that anymore or I'm not active on Twitter, you know, or yep. something like that. And I mean, yeah, you can remove it and you know, change things around in that footer area of the website. Um, but yeah, it's it's not permanent. And and my book up there at the top of the website, I've even noticed on some other attorneys' websites, they uh, when they first publish their book, the book is advertised on the top, which mine is. Um, but then like later, it's further down the page um, because uh, I guess, well, I would always want people drawn to <laughs> my book, but uh, you know, I guess it's not, to them, it's not as important as having whatever else up there. So yeah, I mean, like you change things around and you might even want to change the color scheme and all that stuff like I did, so. Yeah, you just adapt to, you know, the feedback from your customers and the message that you want to get out there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and like I didn't used to be, well, I mean, that's not true. I, I have been more active on social media lately, you know, after COVID, um, I, but I always was kind of active, but yeah, having the links to that is definitely important for me, maybe more than other people and whatever their business is. Um, but David asked a question, um, do you design a CRM database to work with the site or are they generally separate? Um, yeah, so it depends on the CRM. There's a variety of CRMs that you can use. There's things like MailChimp, all the way to Infusionsoft with varying needs and then how integrated it is with the site just depends on your goals. A lot of times we will integrate a CRM um, using like a pop-up or newsletter signups or, you know, like in a cart where it's like an abandoned cart, like creating autom- automations around the CRM. And uh, that's pretty valuable. I would say it's getting people to sign up for a newsletter is one of the best marketing tools you can do right now, at least. Huh. Uh, well, I, I want to follow up and ask why that is. But first, can you explain what a CRM is in case people watching don't know? Yeah, it's a customer. I, I believe the CR it stands for Customer Relationship Management uh, Tool. And uh, yeah, it's like basically a database where you keep contacts and you can sort the database based on, you know, tags or it's like how many people bought in the last five years or, you know, when's the last time I talked to this person? And then you just take different marketing actions based on those tags. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, Mary Sue uh, Dayhill from Work Smarter Digital was actually on um, my webinar, not last week, but the week before. And um, she has her own CRM called Work Smarter Digital. Oh, cool. Yeah. So she was she was talking about newsletters too and email lists, which I, you know, for me, I don't, it, it just seems like for me, a newsletter would just take so much time um, that I just don't have. But I am curious, yeah. you said that it's one of the most important things to do. Oh, and, and then I also don't really... My business, I don't think, is one that really um, is dependent on on collecting a lot of emails. But um, I, maybe I'm wrong. So, can you explain why the newsletter thing is so important now? Yeah. So, a newsletter is important because it's an engaged audience. So, it's someone that's taken action and said, "I want to sign up to learn more about what you have to say." And so that's why you'll see more engagement on a newsletter and people will take more action from a newsletter or an email like that. And I think you bring up a good point, you know, for your business, it may not be the best marketing tool because oftentimes people are searching for a lawyer when they they have a problem, they're not actively uh, like listening or like learning about it until they do have a problem. 
Mm-hmm. So it's all about, I mean, with marketing, it's all about figuring out where your customer is and then trying to figure out how to cater to them where they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's something that I still feel like I struggle with trying to figure out who my ideal client is. <laughs> but Yeah, it takes time. You know, I've adapted who my ideal client is over time and I'm still refining it and um, it changes, I think, as your business grows. Mm-hmm. I definitely think that's true. Yeah. Um, Dave, David Hillison said, um, referring to newsletters, I think it just keeps us top of mind and delivers content. Yeah. Yeah. That's one thing, too. And, you know, you said you don't have enough time for a newsletter, <laughs> but you have a lot of blogs, you know, on, on your website. And what you can do is you can just, you know, once a month send out an email that says, hey, here are the latest blogs from humbrecklaw.com. And then there, it's like you already have the content created and you spend a few minutes, maybe an hour, if you really want to get it right, uh, working on the newsletter to send out once a month. Hmm. You see, this is why I pay people like Troy, because I never would have thought <laughs> that. That's a really good idea. Yeah, I mean, I think it's like, with marketing or developing content, it's all about creating easy ways to take action. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like sometimes people get too caught up in the best practices where it's like, I need to post five times a week on social media. And if I'm not posting on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, I'm losing. And it's Mm -hmm. like, no, just get activity and build Mm -hmm. up to that. And then you can start to refine your, your marketing strategy from there. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's another really good point because that's something that I I wonder about. You know, am I posting enough here, or it's been a day and I haven't posted? Am I posting too much about myself? You know, the eighty twenty rule, and I probably am worrying about it more than I need to. <laughs> but because I mean, I'm, with doing social- this, I'm doing this right now. This is kind of like marketing, right? I don't know. Yeah, in a way. I'm out there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're providing value. Um, you know, whether it's to the people you network with, or you know, directly <laughs> to your customers. Um, it's, it's marketing. Yeah. Uh, another thing that I, I didn't even think about, we, we didn't talk about it all, um, SEO and optimization. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. 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 So it did cross my mind. I just didn't want to like, I guess, bring it up randomly. And, uh, SEO is very important. It's especially for a business like yours where people are searching for things because you want to have content on your site that reflects what people are searching for. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I wouldn't, I would say sometimes people go too far into SEO without thinking about design. Um, It's a, it's, it's always a balancing act, I would say, because you could tailor your website exactly to like the, the perfect SEO search rankings. But then if people get there, and they don't know how to use the site or it's like distracting or something like that, then you may lose the whole point of doing the SEO in the first place. Mm -hmm. But I think you do a good job of doing it through the posts, you know, having specific posts for specific locations like Manassas or Fairfax. And so when people search those things in that area, you're more likely to show up. Yeah. Yeah, so what he's talking about is you know, search term, like, what do people search for? You know, uh, Manassas reckless driving lawyer, reckless driving lawyer in Manassas, something, something like that. And there are tools that you can, um, you know, websites you can go on to find out what people are searching for. Um, but then if you want, you want the people who are typing that, whatever, whatever your particular thing is, like me, you know, reckless driving lawyer in Manassas, I want to come up on the top page of Google so that they'll, well, I want to come up number one, but so they will, (laughs) Um, but having, having the optimization, um, having those certain keywords and key phrases in, in the, within the website, um, and blog posts will help, uh, the traffic come to that, uh, c- come to your website. So, um, so yeah, re- it really is important. Not, not just, not just putting a website out there, not just saying I do this, this and that, you know, tail, you know, who do you want to come to your website? Yeah. We're working on, um, a site right now for SEO where it's like, they have a, it's for a bankruptcy attorney you know at the top they have need relief but that doesn't really 
it's not specific. If someone's like need relief, if they put that into Google, you could get all kinds of people coming to your site. So yeah. it's like, uh, you know, it's like we have to be more specific for him to show up, you know, as a bankruptcy attorney in Falls Church, for instance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I still get calls. Um, you know, Virginia is a big state. I get calls from people um, with issues all over the state because and because they found my website. But, you know, it's um, not not a, not a place that I'm going to travel to go to court. Um, so, I mean, yeah. it's, it's good that they found the website. But, you know, um, that's just an example of, you know, you want the right people coming. Like I, you know, I practice in Prince William, Fairfax and areas up here in Northern Virginia. Um, I'm not going to go to, you know, Bristol, which is on the, the border, uh, you know, or, yeah. or Danville. No, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I guess I can't really complain because people are calling. Um, but it's just, I'm just making the point that like you, you know, you have to, you know, tailor it to the people, you know, the areas that you serve and the people that you want you know, coming to your website. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And using those things, like I think on your site, it has the experienced Northern Virginia criminal defense attorney. And so it's, it's focused towards that area. It's like delivering results in criminal and traffic cases throughout Northern Virginia mm -hmm. and things like yeah. that to help to focus it and make it more location specific. Mm -hmm. But you did that without sacrificing design too. So it's like, that's what I think is, is good. Yeah. And I think that there may have been a little back and forth. I don't know if it was back and forth with um, me and you, Troy, or me and the lady who's helping me with my branding, because I was like, this has to be said in like the perfect way. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think that was me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess it was, it was my branding lady. Um, but um but yeah, I mean, because I wanted to, I wanted to convey the area, like, you know, what it is that I do, not just an attorney, criminal defense attorney, Northern Virginia. But then I was like, oh, is this getting too long? You know, but I mean, it, it gets the point across like it, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like, if someone comes up to your site now from Bristol, they see Northern Virginia, Northern Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, hopefully they read it. Sometimes people just <laughs> <laughs> dial without reading. But yeah. Yeah, that is true. Actually, yeah, that's probably a good point. Maybe I'll get less of those calls. <laughs> <laughs> David, uh, David asked another question. Are backlinks still a thing? Yes. Sorry. And if so, how are they done effectively? Would Humbrecht Law be a site that other lawyers would link to if they don't offer the criminal defense services? Yeah. Um, adding links or backlinks to your site just makes it more reputable. And it's like... If it has more paths, basically, that is a positive for SEO. But you don't want to just create backlinks. You know, the Google search engine, and there's other search engines, obviously, but Google's easy to focus on. The Google search engine gets smarter and smarter and smarter. And so there, you know, you can't just do backlink farms where it's like you put your site or link to certain like random places throughout the internet because yeah. Google's looking for relevant content. And so I would say those strategies are definitely important, but as long as it's relevant to your readers or to the person that's linking to your site. Yeah, that's that's a good, I didn't really think about that. I mean, the backlinks that I have, I think are relevant, um, but I, I didn't think about linking to things that weren't relevant just to have backlinks in there. Yeah, yeah. because. Well, it's like sometimes, you know, it happens that you'll just hire a company and then they'll outsource the backlinking to oh. someone else. And then, you know, you don't really have control of it. And then you can hurt the reputation of your site. Hmm. Well, I mean, in, in what way? Like, like, what is an example of, you know, when someone outsources the, the backlinks and it hurts the reputation of your site? I mean, does it just go to weird websites that don't have anything to do with what you do yeah and then it decreases the ranking of your site with google huh so google will well i mean can you give an example like what what would i put on my website that would do something like that um i guess it would be if someone was like 
So like, let's say you commented on as Humbrick Law on another website and linked to your website, but let's say that website was about cooking. Then it's like, okay, well, that's not really relevant. So if it's once, okay, not a big deal. But then if you have a thousand of those instances, Google's going to flag that and say, huh. this really isn't relevant. Um, and th they know, especially if it's in volume, they know what you're up to. Huh. And I guess, um, I guess I, I would imagine that, that there are people that um, pay for that. Like they'll pay a company or somebody. Oh yeah. Just go and link to all these places and make comments to drive traffic back to their website. Exactly. Yeah. But like if you were to comment on, you know, personal injury attorney's website with some like valuable information and that linked back to your site, that is more relevant and it's just creates a better connection. Mm -hmm. I didn't even think about that. Um, David, does that answer your question? Oh, he also said, um, would Humbrick Law be a site that other lawyers would link to if they don't offer the criminal defense services? I wouldn't, I wouldn't think so. Like, I don't think a, another law firm would be linking to my website. Yeah. Um, I mean, technically they could, but it's just a matter of if they want to drive business your way. You know, I've done that for other uh, co companies that I partner with on my site. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's for services that I don't offer myself, you know, like social media. I don't run social media accounts. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to refer that to someone else and I'll put yeah. the link on my site too. Hmm. Oh, so then I, I guess, yeah, they, they could do that. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, do you guys have any other questions, Terry, if you're still out there? have any questions about what site design? Is there anything else? I, I, I keep saying that and then we keep, um, there, there's so many different things. we keep going deeper, yeah. But I mean, is there anything else we didn't, we talked about color schemes and fonts and the appearance and, um, you know, having things at the top and, and the different the different colors, you know, to, to stand out and the SEO, which is super important. Um, is there anything else we, uh, you wanna, you wanna tell us about the website design that, you know, we as, non-designers don't think about that we should think about i think we covered a lot of the main things you know there's always more nuance in there and there's different like a b testing that you can do to um, improve the site or get the copy just right to see what drives more action mm -hmm. but um yeah i think we've got the basics covered okay uh, well, if you guys don't have any more questions, thank you, David, for all of the questions. I appreciate Thanks, it. Dave. <laughs> He's obviously been watching the whole thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, while while we're wrapping up here, feel free to type a question because I know there's a slight delay on the questions here um, when it pops over to um, there, there's like a 15 second delay or something on Facebook. Um, but uh, Troy, thank you so much for um, first of all for all the work on the website. I'm super excited. I'm really happy about it. Um, and uh, yeah. thank, you, thank you for taking the time to come on um, my little program twice because um, I've, I've been very, no <laughs> obviously, you guys, I've, I've had him on twice. I'm very happy with uh, the work <laughs> that he's done. Um, and this website has been bugging me for a while. And I'm very happy that it's finally, you know, done. Um, and I'm very happy with it. Um, but anyway, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. I know you're a very busy person. Um, so anything else you want to leave us with before we go? Thank you for having me on. Appreciate the time. You know, it was awesome working together on this project and, you know, we still have more to work on on it. Mm -hmm. And I'm, like I said, I'm excited to see how it grows. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again, Troy. And um, I will see everybody um, next week. Actually, our, our last webinar in our series on how to start a successful business is with Gresham Harkless this Friday. Um, and it's entitled, You Are a Media Company. It's talk. It's it's all about marketing. So tune in oh, Friday cool. noon for that. Um, Troy, I think you know Gresham probably from Marvin Powell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then um, I have not decided what my February theme is going to be. So stay <laughs> tuned and check me out next week. Um, all right. I will, um, Troy, you can hang on for a second once I end the broadcast. But um, I will see everybody later. Thanks, guys. <laughs>